Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. Strap in, this is going to be a long one. A little uh, night ops for you. So you can see what happens when the uh, sun goes down and got to get alongside the ship at night. Security call to Elk River, singling up lines at uh, berth 51. Parcel loaded bunker barge on the nose will be coming, turning around and bound over for ship side 96. Tug Elk River. Okay, so once again we're back at our little hidey hole up here berth 51 we'll uh, be sneaking out of the hole as we call it over here there's you're looking at two barges ahead of us here you know we're one barge and the other barge off there to the right there's two exactly behind us as well so we have to kind of sneak out of here without hopefully landing on any of them so that's what we're going to try to do so I'm going to put my rudder hard over to starboard, the right hand side here, and uh, get ready to try to pinch the bow in, lift the stern out. It's been blowing a gale for the last couple days, and uh, knock on wood, it's uh, kind of nice right now. First time in a long time, the wind hasn't been blowing 40 or 50, it's been real hectic. We have a saying out here where we say that, uh, all right, take them in. We have a saying out here where if uh, if the wind's not blowing, we got nothing to bitch about. All we care about is the wind, and uh, it's been real nasty. They're taking off the last lines over there. The tankerman, you'd normally be helping them, but the barge that's on the inside of us has to go, so they're making up in push gear. So the tankermen aren't there, so our guys are taking off. All right, I can roll the bow in, right? We're going to be touching each other. Well, we'll touch each other nice and gentle. We're working. Uh, 1,800 underway. All right. So I'm just doing a nice easy twist. I've said in other videos here that you know it's about controlling energy and that uh, you can touch something else as long as you're going nice and slow. It's when you start building up way that the energy increases. Now I'm just backing a little harder astern because we felt like we were creeping ahead. How's that port bow look? We got plenty of room up there? Very good. Everything's cool on my roll? Yes, sir. Looking good. Still touching up. We ain't even All right. Just what I want to hear. Well, the first week back to work has been interesting. As I was telling you before, it just seems like it's been one gale after another. Blowing and blowing and blowing. And, uh... We're kind of down two men right now, which is, uh, always makes things interesting. Um, as I said in another video, my AB has moved on. He uh, is now in the Tankerman training program, so 
we have a tankerman that's filling in for us as a deckhand and uh, he's a guy that we all know and like and get along good with and all that but uh, anytime you disrupt the crew you know there's a kind of how we all uh, get along and all that it makes things different very good and then we had a man that got sick he got really sick we sent him up to the hospital turns out he's uh he didn't get COVID or anything like that but he's real sick so they're sending him home and we've got another person covering for him so once again like I say it's not the end of the world but it just makes for uh more difficult eh, I don't mean difficult just uh it's not the way the crew usually works Okay, I'm going to try to see if she's going to walk a little bit. She's not loaded too bad, so let's see what happens here. Alright. Okay, so now I'm doing, I'm walking a bit where I'm lifting the bow off and uh, I need to make sure that I don't come ahead because I'm going to run out of room up there in the bow. But I give a little bit of right wheel and do a left twist try to walk it okay. all right try to walk everything to the left I want to keep my bow tight up there so that I keep my angle that I have so I can get by these barges in back of me but I don't want it so tight that it touches Got a little balancing act This is where we're real happy we don't have a lot of wind blowing us right now. Very good. So right now, something really weird is a, something happens at this dock that I have yet to come up with a good explanation why. But you would think I'm angled that I should be able to back straight up. Very good. I should be able to back straight up and miss all these barges, but for some reason every time we do that, regardless of which way the wind's blowing, we always seem to get sucked towards the dock. And in this case, because there's barges over there, that's not exactly something we really want to do right now. So we have to make sure we give ourselves plenty of room. Alright, I'm going to start back a little harder now. So, uh... I'm backing up and in fact what I'm going to do is start backing on the other engine and instead of walking it'll be more of a twist everything's working out just fine I've got the bow falling in a little bit but that's okay because like I say I want to Very good. So everything's working out relatively well. I'm kind of in a hurry because traffic, when I checked in with traffic, they say they had an ultra large container ship bound this way and if he gets in the channel here they won't let us out because he's so big. Okay, so now I don't want the bow to fall in anymore, so I put my rudder amidship back on both engines and we'll get some real stern way going here. We're doing 3-5 in reverse right now. Reggie, you let me know if you think that bow is clear of the 305, alright? Does it look like it's going to be alright or I should straight, I should open it up a little? Alright, I see I'm backing right now and it's rolling around which is going to work well for me as long as I don't hit that barge and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I'd like to come much further back but there's some construction barges in back of me so since I'm doing five and a half backwards I'm going to go all stop, reset my rudder to the right and start spinning this thing around. Check in with traffic. Traffic from the Elk River. We are underway at this time. Very 
very good, good tough animal. All right. Come on back inside, Reggie. We're all good for a little while. I'll give you a call. Yeah, you can get any truck from Cal. All right. I'm going to go back and look in the back window here because I'm getting close to these construction barges. Oh, no, we look like we're just going to miss them. Everything's going to be fine. In fact, I'm going to pull this one back and start twisting so that I don't go shooting ahead. Could zoom in on the chart plotter so you guys can see what we're doing here. There, now you see that red line? That means that I'm not going forward or back. That the stern is actually going right back, back towards the bulkhead here, which is good. Now it says, now for the angle of the the red line is facing the stern of me. I let it come a little bit more forward. There we go. So that red line keeps telling me my relative movement. And now it's starting to face that way, so I'll back a little stronger. Basically, concludes our uh, getting out of the hole. Now I can let everything settle down, and in the meantime, I can show you what we're doing here. If we look at the chart plotter, we're in here. Let me pull it down a little. We're going to come out of here, come around the face of Port Elizabeth, and see this little. There's uh, another tug over here with a barge alongside the ship we're going to go to. Right here is. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but right here is where we're going to be going so as much as a hurry as I am I'll probably come out here quick so I don't get caught by that ULV CV and uh, wait until he gets out of there and then I'll slide in but because I see that the ship is backed in there I'm going to check with uh, Reggie just ask the tankerman if he's good going heads and tails or should I back in Reggie, ask Big E if he's cool going heads and tails starboard side too, or does he want me to turn around in there and back in? All right, good deal. The other the other barge is in there heads and tails, so I figured that uh, it's probably going to work out all right if he's cool with that. All right, very good. All right, so now we're lined up the way we want to go. Like I say, the only thing I got to do now is kill time, but I want to get out of this uh, Port Elizabeth channel here so that uh, when that big ship comes, we won't get stuck up here. Yeah, another saying that we have here is that uh, this job's a lot more fun in June. Man, it hasn't been the worst winter for us. I was really hoping to shoot, get some video of us going through the ice. And my uh, relief, while while we were away on our three weeks off, my relief had three trips up the Hudson, uh, pushing through all the ice. So he got all the luck with that. Of course, I don't think he figures it's all that lucky, but I know that you guys would like to see that, and I would have loved to have filmed that for you. But that's kind of where what happened there. So. Uh, We've been lucky as far as that goes, but man, the wind has been howling. Say the, the 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 wind is the mortal enemy for us out here, or for me at any rate. But uh, it was really blowing. Uh, if any of you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen where I posted just going through the harbor. Saw 62 knots, and we went to assist somebody the other day, and he had 80 some knots of wind. So man. And it blows, it blows stink out here. Yes, I am. It's kind of funny being a harbor boat 
we usually don't care that much about the seas because the seas usually don't build up that much because you're in the harbor but in this case our unit is just about 400 feet long and that's a big long sail out in front of me when it's loaded it's not as bad because it's the, the there's more barge in the water than it is up where the wind can affect it but uh man when the wind starts blowing on that you can uh you can use all your horsepower and it just doesn't want to turn into the wind at all Now, I don't know if you heard any of that on uh, VTS, but the guy that I was alongside, he's getting underway now. And VTS is asking him if he thinks he's going to beat the, the big ship that's coming in here. And he says he's going to go for it and do the same thing I am to try to get out of the channel right here before that big guy comes because they'll shut the channel right down when he comes in. So I don't know if the chart plot has shown it or not, or if you can see it on your little screen there, but uh, in the upper right hand corner, you can see the big ship, AIS target of the big ship and his assist tugs just coming around Bergen Point. So this ought to work out good for us, hopefully. I'm sure he'll call me to wonder what he's going to do. Very good, thank you. Well, the sun is set. We'll see how well the cameras pick things up. I'm going to start dialing down my screen here. The brightness on my screen for the chart plotter, but I think you guys will still be able to see that. Sometimes I get the funniest comments where people are like, "Hey, can you turn the lights up? I can't, I can't see uh, the rudder angle indicator. Can you make that brighter?" <laughs> I, I try to remind everybody, "Hey, you know, this YouTube thing is just kind of fun. It's, uh, or it's supposed to be fun anyway. My job is steering this boat, and if I can't see out the window because the lights are too bright in here, I'm not really doing my job well." So, unfortunately, sometimes we have to work around that, but luckily we've still been able to sh shoot this content and bring it to you. One of the things I've been struggling with is that I want to keep bringing you guys quality content, but <laughs> it seems as though with the way things happen and what I can film and what I can't film sometimes I get far behind and I think to myself is it better to throw up a bad video and keep consistently giving you guys videos every week or would it be better to wait until I have a good one to, to throw up there and uh, you know everybody seems to have a different opinion on that but uh, anyway uh, this this particular week, like I say, with the wind blowing and all that, the last thing I needed was to mess around with cameras and all that. I had my hands full just doing my job. And uh, so it was time to put a video out this week, and luckily I had made a little short one about putting a new wire on, and uh, I was able to get that up, which wasn't the greatest video, but a uh, important part of the job, so hopefully that will hold you over. But 
in a perfect world I'd be like all the big YouTube channels that are three to six months out where they have all, all this content that's out there that's just waiting to post <laughs> I wish I was that organized but that's their job and this is my hobby so uh, I have to kind of play that balancing act All right, you can see the little blue target at the bottom of the screen there. That's the tug that was inside of us with the barge there. He's just getting underway now and he's turning around. He'll be following us out. Now originally, traffic had said that that big ship was gonna go right over here. But then he told me that it was gonna go to 72, which is over here. So my plan is to get up around here and maybe stall out over here so I'll be out of his way and out of the way of the guy that's freeing up my berth or hopefully freeing up my berth <laughs> before we uh, started making arrangements to leave I had talked to him and he figured he'd be about 20 minutes out that was about a half hour ago and he's still at the dock but these things happen It was fun. We had a uh, cadet on for just the weekend, and uh, I don't know if, any, if how many of you saw the video I did with him, but uh, he was asking what what I thought would be important for him to work on as far as uh, being in the wheelhouse. I said, well, the fact that he's a young kid is great. But something that hopefully should get better with age I don't know if it has with me or not but you really have to have a lot of patience in this business because orders change and births you know we're waiting for boom boats and we're waiting waiting for somebody to open up the berth and everything changes and so uh, it's real easy for somebody that's uptight to really lose their mind in this job you got to be relatively flexible Now I'm a little concerned, up in the corner, I'll try to move my mouse over there. This guy right over here, I'm a little concerned. I don't know what he's going to be doing over there. If he's waiting to get alongside that ship, he and I are going to have to go, we're going to have to fight it out. Oh, looks like he's turned around. Maybe he just came off of that ship. So before I call him, I'll see what he's doing first. Come in. Yeah, Captain, you coming down the face of here? I am. I, I, are you light? Yeah, I'm light, but I'll get out of your way. I'll see you on one. Oh, you're the man. Yeah, no, I'm going to stall out over there until the Fort Skyler gets out of the way, and uh, I want to be out of the way of that big guy coming up here. Okay, all right. I'll see you on one. All right, cool. The Magathy's coming out behind me, too, just to give you a heads up. Okay, thanks. All right, you can probably see the little lights of the tugboat up there, light boat. One, one white light means that he's light boat. Two would be that he's pushing or got a barge alongside. And I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but we can see the silhouette of the ship there. It's inbound. And we're going to stay way over here and be way out of his way. Now it looks like the Fort Schuyler the uh, tug that's alongside the ship we're going to, it looks like he's starting to move, so that's a, that's a good sign for us. We might not even have to slow down.
You know what this is probably going to happen is that I should probably slow down anyway because he's when he comes off the ship there he's going to have to he might get tangled up with that big ship that's coming in so I don't want to be right on top of him so I think I'll get up a little further and then slow down give him a little bit of wiggle room Fort Schuyler, Elk River. Fort Schuyler. Curtis, what channel are you working? Yeah, uh, 68, sorry. Very good. Alright, so I heard him talking to somebody else that's doing something. I didn't understand what he was doing, so I'm going to see if I can get that cleared up. Curtis! Hey, what's going on, Tim? Hey, I just heard you talking to that other guy. What, what did he say he was doing? He's going to be giving him a little, but I guess he's just throwing up some buckets and stuff for him right now. Uh, he said he, he knows you're coming. All right, cool. All right, good deal. I just pulled him back here to give you room so you wouldn't get tangled up with that butterfly. I'm, uh, I'm good. I turned around. I'm, I'm, as soon as he clears, I'm going to shoot right out of here. All right, good deal, man. Have a good trip. Right, take care. All right, so that shouldn't be too much of a delay. So if you look at the chart plotted, this is the situation. This is the big ship that's coming in. He's going over to here. We're right here, and we're going to this ship. This is the guy that was at our ship that's leaving, and this is a, a little lube oil boat that's dropping some pails of something off over there, and he knows that we're coming. And this is another boat that was uh, inside of us, and he's headed out trying to get out of here to turn the corner before this guy comes over there. Hopefully that makes sense. believe that it would show up on camera but there's a big black barge there now you can just see the lights of the tugboat and that was the guy that was at the ship that we're going to and you might say why is the ship taking two different barges it's probably not that the barges weren't big enough it's probably different products 
so that uh, they gave him one product and they probably had a different product on this barge and we're going to give them this other product. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for a fact, but I, I would say that that's a probably pretty good guess of what happens here. Some of these great big barges, uh, these great big ultra-large container vessels, they'll take multiple barges full of fuel or a big 50 barge will spend 18 hours pumping to them. After the wind that we've had the last couple of days, it's so nice just to have this little rust bit where the wind isn't blowing. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on the chart plotter a little bit. Center it up so we can see what we're doing here. That guy's still over there. I'm trying to time it where I get over there just as he's leaving because there's. I just got done telling you how you have to be patient in this business, but really test your patience when you're lined up ready to go and you can't go and for one reason or another you just keep falling out of shape with every minute that goes by back to clutch. In fact, I'll go all stop right now just because uh, we're making five knots. I really want this guy to be gone when I come around the corner. Or getting ready to go anyway. Caitlin Ann, Trevor. That's the Caitlin. Up on the salt box now, the Robert Burton. And then by the 31, going to be stuck in the back channel. Well, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Just Okay. Now we're doing 3.8 knots, so I'm going to start slowing down. I'd rather stop here than stop. Once I make my turn, there'll be a lot of lateral movement, so I might be able to get it stopped right here before I turn, and that way I uh, won't continue to lose my shape. We'll go all stop and hang out. Elk River, Liz Newberg. Elk River. Bob Barry, you can come out if you want, Rob. I'm good. Hey, Cap, were you waiting on us? I am. Uh, you uh, come on in. We were just uh, trying to get a couple of pails until you came around the corner. We'll get clear. Very good. All right, I guess we can go. Okay. On that butterfly. Butterfly. Hey, you're calling straight in, correct? Yes. Thank you. So if you see my vector line, you'll see it's starting to continue down the channel. That's because we're rotating to the right, and that's kind of what I was trying to avoid. I, uh, if I hung out there, I'd still be falling down that way with the tide. So as we start making headway here, hopefully 
that line will start straightening out and getting ahead of us and it won't be showing so much lateral movement all right reggie we're coming up the ship We're coming up to the ship. And there's our ship right there. And it looks like that little guy is hanging off out of the way for us. So everything's looking good. Now one thing I didn't do that I'm regretting now is that when I was talking to the other boat that was here, I should have asked him where the connection is but I got a feeling it's going to be back by the house where they normally are some of this one's not real big some of the really big ones there they have them in interesting locations sometimes they have a little door that opens and other times they have a little crane all that sort of thing I'm going to zoom in my chart plotter so I can watch the vector line get it aimed at the flat of the ship When I say the flat of the ship, I'm talking about the flat side as opposed to where the rake is of the ship from the bow and the stern. I'm doing 3 7 right now, which. I got you, Reggie. Reggie, I'm guessing we're going to be back by the house there, so if you see something different, you let me know. <laughs> I'm really regretting that uh, I lost a really good AB. I didn't lose him. He, he, I mean, he went on to better things as, a, you know, he, he went to be a tankerman, which is something that makes us feel happy and proud. And uh, I know that same is going to happen with Reggie. Reggie's put his time in, done his schooling, and uh, they're going to be taking him away sooner than I'd like. But uh, Lord knows he's ready and definitely deserving of the job, but uh, we sure are going to miss him over here. So now you can see that, unfortunately, I'm aiming right, but the vector line is parallel with a ship, which means I'm going to be way... Very good, which means that uh, if I don't start getting way towards the ship, we're going to be way far off the ship by the time we get over there. So I need to get in tighter to the ship and then spin, spin the bow to the left and the stern to the right. So right now I'm just coasting. 2.5 knots using the weight of the barge to carry us along. Ninety feet. Now I just got one engine going. We're doing 2.2, getting closer and closer. What I'm afraid of is that when I get to the ship, everything's going to want to fall off the ship. 60 feet. 60 feet. So I want to get up there as close as I can. So that... Uh, I'm going to be naturally falling off anyway. Now I'm just going to coast a little bit. I'm going to set my rudder off to the left so that if I have to, I can jam the bow to the right, uh, to the left. 40 feet. I'm going to start backing on my port engine for a twist and coming ahead on my starboard engine to start twisting around, flattening out. Flattening out meaning that I'm going to be parallel with the ship. Now I'm watching the bow and the bow is starting to lift off. So I'm going easy because I want to keep 
30 feet. So you can check me out. I'm at Turport. Thank you. I want to keep that bow as close to the ship as I can get without ramming it. <laughs> and, you know, we'll give ourselves a little light here. Oh. Reggie, that light okay with you? No, I don't see anybody. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'm going to drive ahead a barge length, right? Alright, so we're looking better all the time. Reggie says that we're 30 feet off and there's a guy up there waiting for us. we got to get about a barge length ahead. We just let it go. We're doing 1.7. Staying relatively close to the ship. Trying to inch over all the... <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> He's so funny. 25 feet wide. So now... They're 25 feet wide. Hey, Is that the connection where they're standing at? Yeah, you see them right there? No, I don't see anybody. I, I can't see anybody with the lights. Okay, cool. You get that big E? Fifteen feet wide. Okay, so now my rudder is hard over right. I'm fifteen feet wide. We're going one point two knots, so I'm putting my rudder hard over the starboard. Well maybe not hard over, but halfway. So that we continue to flatten out as we're staying real close. My guess is that we have about fifty or hundred more feet ahead that we have to come. And it looks like the bow's settling in, so I'm now gonna put my rudder hard over. Once again I'm just coasting right now. So my rudder is preset. If I need to lift that bow off, it will come off. And I'm looking like... Okay, I just seen a guy come out by the accommodation ladder, so hopefully he's one of our guys. When I say one of our guys, they were looking, uh, Reggie hey, was looking. So about 30 ahead, we'll be spotted. 30 ahead, all right. So uh, the guys that were looking at us before were probably part of the engineering crew on the ship, and they're, they're not going to handle lines. So I think I just spotted a uh, one of the deck crew that hopefully will send down a heaving line that we can drive into. Very good. Putting the brakes on. So we're doing 0 0.4, 0 0.2. Yeah, so another 12 feet, we'll be on a spot, and that, that bit is, uh, our double bits is about 20 until we get to it, so yeah, we'll be off. Yeah, we'll get one right here. All right. Now the bow is close, and the stern's off, so I'm just going to... Hey, Tim, when we get tied up, can you look at my radio and see if you can fix the squirrels on here? Sure. So basically I was pretending that I was walking where I'm doing a right twist with left wheel and that's just to get the stern moving over that way and not have the bow fall in any further. I'm going to hit this guy with a light real quick. Okay, there, he's, he, he's waving to us now. All right, I just hit the guy with the light. He's waving to you now. I guess you're talking to him. All right, cool. Yeah, Disregard. Okay, so now we're getting more and more flat, so I'm going to ease my rudder and try to almost just walk it over here. Not in a big hurry to walk over, but like I told you, we'll be falling off the ship all the time. Okay, here comes a heaving line. And we're about 20 feet shy of the spot, so when they send up a line, when we drive into it, maybe we'll, we'll have a plan right where we need to be. At least that's the plan. Okay. 
Okay, so the stern's m o over more than the bow, so I got to give a little bit of right wheel to get that bow back. Here comes another heaving line. I don't know, maybe they lost it the first time. There, now the bow's coming over, so I ease the rudder a little bit, so that we try to land flat. I look over to my right and I find a spot on the ship to see if we're making any uh, headway or sternway. Looks like we're doing good. So I just keep bringing her over. And they're putting a line out to go all stop, so that way when we get over there we won't bounce off the ship. We've got our fenders down, what we call the Yokohamas. Line's going up midship. Coming ahead, 10. So here we go. Now we got some momentum, so I just go all stop. And Very good. Now he's wrapping up the line. I'm going to put it clutch a stern just so that we don't walk through the line. There we go. As that line comes tight, it's going to start pulling us over. All right, I was just coming into that line easy. We'll be moving over all the time. Very good. Now you see that that line is pulling us right over. Looking good. Right in the log for the first line. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River. We got a line out here alongside uh, Shipside uh, 96. You can check me out. Thank you. And now they're just going to tie it up. So there isn't a whole lot more for you guys to see. Thank you for hanging in there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I guess I uh, try to continue to keep bringing you stuff and hopefully it won't get boring. I, uh, you guys are so kind in the comments saying that uh, you'll watch the same thing over and over again. But man, I try to put a video together that I think has a good story and doesn't go anywhere. And I show you the same thing of me leaving a dock or coming into a ship or something like that and they seem to do better so whatever it is I'll try to get you uh, guys what you want to see and I thank you so much for watching and uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe that helps out the channel you can give us a thumbs up or ring the bell leave a comment and uh, as always a special thank you for the, to the patrons the patrons are the people that pay the bills for everyone else to watch the channel and uh, really cool. Anyway, you guys be safe out there, and as always, I'll see you on the one.